Well, <laughs> you join me at the seat at a bus stop. And it's painted in the old Eastbourne Corporation Seafront Bus Service livery. White or cream with blue. And that's obviously replaced the bus shelter that stood here for more years than I care to remember. You join me can't believe it's the 14th of June already on Sunday morning at Prince's Park and there is the entrance over the road there Prince's Park more of that later and uh, I'll draw your attention to this house opposite which as you can see its name is is far end because until 1969 this was as far as you could go and continuing my series of walks this week along the parades of Eastbourne Seafront and this is Royal Parade There's a little bit of a wind about, so I hope it's not going to spoil things too much. I won't find out until I get home. <coughs> and of course if it does, I'm going to have to do it all over again sometime, aren't I? many people out walking again this morning. It's about twenty past five. Activity already on the seafront. Fishermen, people walking, cycling, jogging. Walking alongside what is known as Fisherman's Green. Just have a Quick look through there in a minute, although we'll be coming back that way later. There we are with the tennis courts. Hawcorn Maritime, that's an interesting name. The Alcorns owned the pleasure boats that used to go from the other side of the pier on the beach trips around Beachy Head and uh, I didn't know until I read a, an article in the paper some weeks ago they, um, they sold out to the Sayers family one of whom was a chap called Ted Sayers ex-naval man in charge of the local Sea Cadet Corps and with whom I worked for many years as he was in the cash office at what was Eastbourne Corporation, which then became Eastbourne Buses. Notice this low wall here as we go past. That's all that's left 
of the building that had stood here for oh, more years than I care to remember. Now, this stone was laid by Mrs. Bolton, Mayoress of Eastwood, April the 1st, 1914. And that was the foundation stone of the building that stood there, which by the time I arrived in Eastbourne, early 70s, had become Eastbourne Corporation's main winter deck chair store and restoration area. Before that it had been a drill and all sorts of things. Now, on the opposite side of the road there, you see that block of flats. Now that frontage is the front of the old safe down garage here, which went way, way, way down behind. That was where safe down used to keep their coaches. Another pub gone. That was the beach hotel. And we're just walking past the fishermen's club now. You don't have to be a fisherman to join. <laughs> very, very popular club in its day. I've done a few discos in there years ago and uh, been to many excellent dudes there. We're approaching what we call <laughs> bed and breakfast land. This area just off the seafront is where you find the smaller hotels and the bed and breakfast establishments. But here we have Treasure Island. I can't remember how long ago it was now, I'm sure it was way back in the mid 70s, no earlier. The um, council decided that this bit of ground here would do well for a children's entertainment area. So they created this theme park based on Treasure Island. Very, very popular. Um, and then some years ago, the council went through this mad phase. They didn't want to run it themselves anymore. So, they had this brilliant idea of franchising it out. Now, I don't know the whole story, but I gather But um, the franchisee closed the doors one day and more or less handed the keys back to the council and said, Do you think you can make money out of it? What you're charging us, we're not making any money out of it. So I'm pretty sure it's back in council hands now, but to be honest, not coming up here or anything like that, it's uh... <coughs> and I tend not to read the local paper. But anyway, after a couple of seasons closed, it was refurbished and opened again. And of course it remains as popular as ever with the kids. If it was allowed to open this year. <laughs> three months on and we're still in this lockdown and over on the other side of the road there you see this let's go across and have a look it's a lovely sunrise this morning but
what I don't understand is, although not much attention has been paid to this little garden, and that's one of the nice touches about the seafront, there's just these little little places you find. It looks quite nice. Unlike the carpet gardens area that uh, I covered in another video. Once again you see, although they're beginning to droop a bit through lack of rain, we, uh, we love our palm trees here. I'm just going to zoom along the road. There you see the tops of the downs in the distance. Rather nice. It makes it so very pleasant. Here we come into the, the bed and breakfasts. Although some have been turned into houses of multiple occupation and others have been forced to take permanent residence because the seasonal business is just gone. Take a little diversion here. This bowling green again used to be council owned, and uh, they decided they were going to close the greens, and so the bowls clubs had to become private. I see now. This one is called the Parade Bowling Club. There used to be another bowling green down at Prince's Park. And as I remember, that one used to be the Parade Bowling Green. And this was Prince's Park Bowling Club. But, uh, Taking this little diversion because you see we're coming up to the Redoubt Fortress. Just zoom in on the top of it there. The Martello Towers had all been completed by about 1805, and I think almost after the horse had bolted, they then built a series of what they call these great redoubts. There's another one in good state of preservation at New Haven, New Haven Fort and these was the house the regiments of soldiers that were sent here to help guard against the French although this wasn't completed till about 1810-1812 I see we've got an old cannon here, and for many years a centurion tank was parked on a plinth here. And, uh, it got vandalised and goodness knows what. And there were campaigns to get rid of it. And in the end it was indeed removed.
don't know what we're going to be able to see of this up here. Well, look, you want to put a time you could get as far as the as the gates, but not now. The only thing I can show you is that it was probably moated in its time. What a situation though, hey? Right, let's have a look and see if we can... Yes. Tells you all about the moat. Anyway, you could always pause it. If you want to read it. Ah, well. We've got some information anyway. I can see the nasty dark clouds over there. So better not hang around too much. Busy head here. Oh, look, there's, a, there's about that. And there's a nice, nice palm tree. <coughs> That's why I say this end. Although, yes, you can see that they do need water. So much nicer. And down the end of the road there. Is Christchurch on the seaside. I didn't realise what a nice building it is to be up to this side. Now in here was the old, what was the Eastern Bandstand at one time, but in recent years it's been the Pavilion Tea Rooms and now it's become a little bit of a heritage centre, a museum. whether that kiosk there is where the bandstand was. There's a memorial here. Company Sergeant Nelson Carter. Yeah, quite recent, 2016. awarded the Victoria Cross. Yes, I wonder whether that was the actual site of the old bandstand. Yes, this building here, that's now called the Pavilion, was Readout Cafe. And then it became the Pavilion Tea Room and went all upper class with
You put new griffle tape on it, and all my other stuff will be on my room. The things you see in here. Forgot what I was saying here. Oh yeah, with um, I and I was on the town tours. I used to call them our local nippy girls, remembering lions corner houses. Always used to wonder why some of the old girls used to look at me funny. And then I found out that the nippy girls, in many cases, were offering other services as well as tea and cake without the bosses knowing. I think Joe Lyons would have had a fit. This actually now brings us to Grand Parade. It will be zooming straight into the sun so I won't be able to see across to Hastings this morning. But here we have again the lovely sunrise. And this is where Royal Parade turns into Marine Parade. And I don't propose to walk along there, there's too many closed hotels, it's a rather sad affair. But there's the pier. But I do want to pan round and just tell you of... Yeah. In amongst that lot, Queen's Hotel rising above everything else, is where, as I said before, they found remains of an old Roman villa. Uh, coming this way, there's the old Albion Hotel there, which in 1880, I think it was, had the distinction of being the very first building in Eastbourne to be lit by electric light from the new Eastbourne Electric Light Company. They also had Eastbourne's first telephone, number one.